Well, I just did a video sharing with you my favorite, my top favorite niche fragrances to wear in the winter. Yes, I distinguish between fall and winter fragrances, although there really isn't a technically a difference because it's always just warm weather fragrances versus cold weather fragrances. But I do still distinguish between fall and winter fragrances based on the atmosphere, the ambiance, the differences in the ambiance, you know, between fall and winter. So yeah, there are certain strong, long lasting projecting fragrances that belong in winter more than fall. So I thought it's time that I brought you the designer version of that video, my favorite, my top favorite designer fragrances that I love to bring out during winter. So let's jump right in. Hi my lovely people, welcome back to another fabulous fragrance video. I know, I know, these type of top 20, top 10 videos are not as popular anymore. Everybody knows what they want for winter, fall, spring and summer. But you know what? I still want to share with you guys my top favorites for each season because I tell you, it is important, it is important. I know they don't get as many views and they're not as interesting as, let's say, a Gerla collection video, right? You know, those videos are rare, but I still want to share with you what I'm wearing this winter, you guys, okay? So, you know, it's okay. It's okay if it's not as popular. All right, so, first of all, I wanna tell you again what I, what I said in that my niche version of this video, the niche winter fragrances that the difference that I see between fall and winter, even though both seasons are cold, fall is more like a grungy, vampy type of time, you know, leaves are falling and the mood is very kind of vampy, grungy, how can I say, you know, Halloween's in fall. Whereas winter, if you live in a area of the world, country that has all four seasons, you know, you start to see winter has a different vibe. You know, first of all, snow is a part of majority of the winter. Well, light reflects off the snow, so it's a little bit more of a brighter time, I feel, than, than fall. Even though some areas do get snow in the fall. But you know what I mean. And then also there's something more festive about the winter because of Christmas, Hanukkah, and all that. Winter is a little bit more and New Year's and Valentine's Day, yada yada, right? So winter is a little bit more upbeat, like more festive, so more festive type of fragrances fit better in winter time, I feel like. I am, by the way, going to do another video about the best holiday fragrances, you guys. That would be kind of part of this two, these two videos, but I left those fragrances out on purpose because I wanted to do a separate video on that. That will be niche and design of both festive fragrances for both seasons. Yeah, so let me jump right in. Now, I find strong white floral fragrances to be the perfect, perfect match for winter, weather, and ambiance, all that. Because I feel like, like this, I'm talking strong white florals. I'm not talking about your you know, light, summery, orange blossom, jasmine type of, you know, innocent white florals. I'm talking about the sexy, bewitching, beast mode white floral fragrances. Like, let me start with this one. Right here, Giorgio Armani Rouge Maliki. You guys, this is a, I, I don't like to call things beast mode. This is a more projecting, more strong, bewitching type of white floral, right? Uh, this has that very strong white floral presence. This fragrance also has a bit of a kick. I personally think there's something like a sharp balsamic note, like, you know, LMI type, or there's a peppery vibe in here. So yeah, there's a bit of a kick to it. 
You guys know this is a tuberose dominant fragrance, so it's very tuberosey, bubblegummy in any way. You know how a lot of the times, especially artificial or synthetic tuberose notes can be like very bubblegummy. For example, the velvet, what is it called? Mansara velvet something, which is tuberose dominant. It's very sweet, kind of very like bubblegummy, not at all the case with this. This is, I'm pretty sure, natural tuberose note in here. Has some other white florals like jasmine and stuff. I think there's even like yellow florals in here, but it but the tuberose is like the star of this fragrance. You can smell the tuberose. That strong tuberose. And there's something in here that is giving it a bit of a kick. I wanna say it's like a spicy balsamic note, like LMI, or it is like a pepper type of spice with a kick okay definitely there's something in here that's a little bit spicy and there's a very kind of uh you know like a wool sweater kind of vibe you know like that cozy sweater vibe cashmere is is what brings it cashmere has like this like you know have you ever smelled like a brand new cashmere sweater or you know wool sweater it has like this certain scent and feel to it so cashmere cashmere brings that sort of vibe to the fragrance so there's like this winter coziness about this fragrance and that sexy edginess you know that that white floral the bewitching part of it kind of like a baddie kind of white floral you know there's a fair amount of amber i believe in here it is a very very sexy you know strong woman confident woman type of fragrance it's not your innocent white floral it's not your light summer white floral no 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 sorry this is definitely something for that strong woman it is actually something i wear to work during winter because it has like a you know it's edgy and sexy but at the same time there's something very you know, boss lady kind of vibe about it, which I love. And here is another strong musky white floral that I think fits perfect within the winter type of atmosphere weather. This is a super strong musky fragrance. I do believe a strong musky fragrance, especially when mixed with a strong white floral or two, perfectly fits well within that winter vibes, right? I'm talking about this one right here, Narciso by Narciso Rodriguez. This one has that super, this is a gardenia dominant fragrance. There again, I believe this has cashmere too. There, there's that same vibe as this Rouge Malachite, only with a heavy dose of musk in this one. This has musk too, but not as much as in here. This one has a blast of musk, you guys. I mean, the musk is strong. Now, if you're not a fan of musk and you find it to be intimidating, maybe you won't love it, but I tell you, this is a compliment getter and people are drawn to this. This is, again, that boss lady, fashionista, you know, like, like this reminds me of a buyer for a designer you know, line, that kind of lady, you know what I mean? Boss lady in fashion kind of vibe. And yeah, like I said, this has a huge amount of gardenia. I love gardenia with a huge dose of musk. There are other notes in that, but you know what? None of that shine because of the musk and the gardenia in here, so no point in talking about them. That's really what it is, very, very strong. And here's the other one from Narciso Rodriguez that I love, this is Narciso Pudre. This one is it's kind of like this, but this one is even more bus lady, even more white floral than this one. This is more of a powdery fragrance. This one is like a powder puff with musk. That's like the best way I know to put it. And this has like, rose jasmine type of beautiful florals like a mix of rose and white florals mainly and huge of course blast of musk which again makes it so appropriate for winter it really works that's that crispness of winter there's a sweetness in here because there's tonka bean a good dose of tonka bean in the base which makes it slightly like sweet and it's a little bit like earthy too i think there's vetiver and a little patchouli but you can't really it's not dirty at all not dirty patchouli not like dirt type of 
no 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 it's like a slight earthiness yeah it's very like very again boss lady type fragrance and it is like a perfect complement to winter weather and then I have two more here by Chanel um, so I just got this one you guys so this is actually Chanel Gardenia this is the parfum or a parfum because that is the more highly oil concentrated version of the eau de parfum this has this is not extrait but there's this is more of a concentrated version but anyway I got this is very expensive like for this tiny little thing right here it cost me an arm and a leg as you can see it fits on my palm I just bought it by the way so was it Bloomingdale's Bloomingdale's I think yeah it was Bloomingdale's was having a holidays like a sale where tip for you guys for, for the future if you ever want anything from Chanel a less exclusives line the, the time to get it like at a discount the only time you get a discount is when Bloomingdale's has that sale event and you can only get it in store so tip for you you can never get a discount on anything Chanel especially not the less exclusives line okay you guys so tip for you right there um, anyway, this is a very highly concentrated version of the Chanel Gardenia or the Parfum. Oh, this is strong, very natural Gardenia. Now, I believe in Narciso Rodriguez, the Gardenia is synthetic, which you can tell. And especially mixed with musk, definitely you can tell it's synthetic, whereas this is purely natural Gardenia but it's still very strong you guys it's potent and it projects and it lasts and it's perfect for that crisp winter air and you can wear this in the cool spring before it turns warm you know and you can wear this in warmer weather too but at night time I would say you know um, yeah it's more of a fragrance that complements that crisp cold winter Gardenia is the star. There are a lot more other notes. I am not going to take time to talk to you about notes, you guys. You can look them up yourselves. But it is a very pretty, sophisticated, still kind of not sexy, like alluring fragrance that would be perfect for anything, you know, anything really during winter. It's something that goes from an from a date like or from a special daytime event even and to a nighttime date or nighttime formal occasion you know work function anything it's like a signature scent worthy gorgeousness and if you are a bride getting married in the winter here's the one for you it's a memorable fragrance it's kind of sexy sophisticated alluring you know like very very it's 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 very feminine very alluring okay that's really only way I can put it here's another fairly new addition to my collection actually it's just a new bottle I've had this fragrance in my collection I lost the cap to my old one so I had to kind of discard it because it was losing the smell anyway so this is Coco Noir by Chanel this is a this fragrance screams winter this is that that very like old world kind of Chanel number no. five days you know back in the 50s that type of fragrance that has that old world sophistication but it's very buttoned up formal it has a bit of a boss lady vibe you know what I mean this is great for like work nighttime work functions anything buttoned up it's a very classic fragrance it's very strong and if you are intimidated by patchouli you will not like this yes you can smell the patchouli it's quite strong it has an earthiness that gives most Chanel fragrances that sort of sophistication there's something about patchouli that adds this you know like Chanel DNA a lot of the Chanel fragrances have that sophistication from the patchouli like Cook Mademoiselle you know all, all of those like main ones that we know about they have patchouli not the gardenia not not that one so it has like a bunch of florals I believe like rose narcissus 
geranium which complements rose a lot some citruses like you know Chanel Coq Mademoiselle all of those like start out with that sharp citruses kind of like you know all those old school fragrances like Guerlain you know Shalimar has a very sharp citrus opening although middle and, and base layers are not like fresh at all you know what i mean this has a big dose of patchouli you guys which gives it that sort of sophisticated earthiness that you know chanel gets that dna from very sensual with the sandalwood in the dry down some tonka bean and vanilla i believe so big blast of musk which really complements that winter weather and a bunch of other notes but you know it is not for everybody i will say that much i love to use this like during winter for that sort of buttoned up boss lady kind of vibes you know it is something i wear mostly to work and to work functions or anything buttoned up like one of my kids school nighttime events you know things like that here's another narciso rodriguez fragrance that i think fits well during this time this is narciso rodriguez for her this is the edt there's an edp also this is an osmanthus and musk fragrance the star of the show is osmanthus osmanthus is that sort of apricot honeyed type of yellow floral do you know what i mean and it has other some other floral notes big blast of musk and some amber some earthiness from vetiver and stuff you know a little bit of vanilla well the earthiness from vetiver and patchouli but anyway again it has that boss lady vibes you know and it complements speaks to that winter crisp weather strong enough to last and cut through the cold weather then i have two bottles that actually say it all <laughs> that are black um, let me talk about this. So this is L'Entrati en Tons by Givenchy. This one, you guys, is another one of those really mysterious, sort of weird fragrances, really. It's another strong white floral fragrance. Has loads of tuberose. They're, again, perfect for that winter vibes with a little kick from black pepper. Kind of reminds me a little bit of this, but they're not the same at all. You know, less tuberose in here than in the Rouge Malachite, and that's a different kind of level. They're not on the same level at all. And this has that really weird sesame vibe, like it's the sesame note, you guys. You know, it's very hard to describe the sesame note but it had that's this very like different layer to this fragrance it has a bit of an earthiness from a little patchouli and vetiver type things i think a little bit of vanilla then it's not at all sweet but mostly it's that tuberose strong bewitching white florals fragrance with a bit of a kick same type of thing so this is great for winter and here's another one that has a black bottle. This is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. This one has been discontinued, I think, guys. So there again, this is a very strong white floral. Not a summer fragrance. I've seen people talk about this as if it's a summer fragrance just because this has a little hint of coconut. By the way, you guys, you will see here soon when I talk to you about another strong white floral that is definitely hypnotic and definitely for winter that just because there's a little hint of coconut doesn't mean it's a summer fragrance okay okay come on look at the bottle hello anyway it's a strong white floral with all these strong white floral notes jasmine and stuff but there's it's not like a, a mild white it's it's strong it has a bit of coconut but so does something else that you know is a winter fragrance i'll talk to you here in a minute this again has that sort of sweater fussy sweater kind of like coziness that cashmere gives it a uh, little hint of vanilla actually a little more vanilla than most of these fragrances you can smell slightly the sweetness really nice fragrance honestly for winter time but it has been discontinued i believe now speaking of another strong white floral that is definitely hypnotic and definitely bewitching can't go winter without hypnotic poison you guys this is the order toilette the EDT, EDT is better than the Eau de Parfum in this case, 
rare moments, rare times where the EDT takes the stage over the EDP. Yes, this has a little hint of coconut. Doesn't make it a summer fragrance, okay? This has got tuberose that, again, that strong tuberose with some jasmine and other really dominant white florals and some rose. And this has, I think, Lily of the Valley, which is a pretty, pretty, pretty fragrance. But this is, again, boss lady, like baddie, like, you know, like the queen from Snow White, the Eva Queen would wear this fragrance. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a bit of a strong boss lady fragrance it has this very almondy nuance from the almond note some vanilla in here uh it's one of those really like a winter staples for me and i actually love it so much that i have the rollerball version of it that i put in my purse and carry around winter time must have now here's one that i just cannot go a winter without and I only bring it out in winter, not even fall, because this only complements the winter weather. This is Sadiq and Voltaire. This is her, you guys. This is a very cozy, creamy, sandalwoody, winter perfection fragrance. Um, my, my husband bought this for me years ago. I went through the whole bottle and I got another bottle. I think I went that through that too i think this is my third bottle if i can if i'm not mistaken i can't honestly remember this you can smell that strong sensual woody creamy woody sandalwood which complements the creaminess of the sandalwood almost that milkiness of the the sandalwood complements the whipped cream note that's in this fragrance and there's a chestnut note in here that adds this like beautiful like nutty awesomeness that really work well with the whipped cream in here of course there's vanilla in here that complement it all such a gorgeous stunning fragrance i find it to be like wearing a sweater cozy sweater it's sexy it's it's everything it's it complements winter weather like there's no other those cozy sweater sweater fussy sweater feeling fragrances are perfect for winter you guys okay so i have a powdery one that i think is i mean these powdery like strong powdery fragrances really complement winter weather too and here's one that i find really complements winter weather this is my way parfum this is actually an iris fragrance again iris like blue purple flowers in general give off like this powdery sort of lipstick vibe but iris paleta which is a type of iris gives definite lipstick vibes makeup vibes that like very powdery kind of lipstick kind of plasticky vibes you know like doll hair kind of like vibes you know this is gorgeous you guys it is so powdery so strong but like that doll hair that that's slightly plasticky but like you know like in a very feminine way that makeup powder you know lipstick vibe this fragrance gives absolutely love it and it complements it's a strong fragrance does project does last complements winter weather there like there's no other and here's another one that is such a gorgeous sexy boss lady baddie type of fragrance that yeah, it has a little coconut, and no, it's not a summer fragrance. This is Versace Crystal Noir. I hate this cap. It's like a big rock. But other than that, love the fragrance. It's super sexy. It's like men love this fragrance. There's something very alluring about it. There, again, you get strong white florals like gardenia and... I don't know, jasmine, a bunch of like white florals. It's spicy. There's a spicy kick in the opening. I think there's like black pepper and a little cardamom even. Like it's a spicy fragrance. It has a juicy zing from ginger. You know how ginger just, just oh, makes fragrance so good. Big blast of musk with like sexy amber and sensual sandalwood. You know, guys, like it is a very sexy, baddie, boss lady alluring has sex appeal kind of fragrance love this thing then i have two that i'm gonna kind of prepare together almost 
This is Tom Ford Lost Cherry and Tom Ford Cherry Smoke, both of which are cherry fragrances. Uh, like I said, cherry is one note that, in my opinion, works in fall and winter. Okay, so I love to wear all my cherry fragrances in winter and fall, really, but I love these in the fall, uh, in the winter especially. So Lost Cherry is, as you guys know, that boozy, gorgeous cherry fragrance that is a bit balsamic and just perfect almondy cherry, you know, um, perfection. But it doesn't project which is a problem in the winter, although cherry complements winter weather, right? You need something strong to cut through that cold weather, which is where this comes into to play cherry smoke, which is a little stronger, a little smokier, a little bit, you know, it's cherry, but it's black cherry, you know. So if you layer these two, this will help you give that strength you need for winter, you know what I'm saying? So I like to kind of layer these together in the winter time. Love them, love them, love them. So another really strong cherry fragrance that for sure, you know, cuts through the cold weather and stand up to cold weather like there's no tomorrow is this one right here. This is the strongest cherry fragrance I know. This is Gerla um, Cherry Oud from the Gerla La Arlematier collection, the Privé line. You guys, this is a very strong cherry leather oud fragrance. Now, don't be scared. Yes, oud is intimidating. Yes, leather is intimidating, but leather can be very, very luxurious in fragrances. It gives this sort of luxe vibe to fragrances, you know, and like sexiness. This is a very strong cherry fragrance, but, it, but the leather is just as strong almost and there's a little bit of oud, but it's not really barnyard oud, but it is a strong oud. More on the strong side, I should say. I do sometimes wish the oud was toned down a tad bit, but I still love it. And I especially love to sort of um, layer it. Uh, it. It is a lasting, cutting through cold weather kind of cherry fragrance. I love the juice color. I love these customized, customizable bottles. You know, you can customize this and this and all that. I got like this, the crocodile kind of uh, played up here. So yeah, I love it for winter. And speaking of sexy leather fragrances, here's my all-time favorite leather fragrance. This is by Christian Louboutin from the Luby World Collection. And this is the Luby Raj with that gorgeous cap with the turban tiger with the little red jewel. This one, you guys, is basically a gorgeous suede a note in here that gives the leather a cord. It is a super sexy, sexy fragrance, I believe. There are some balsamic notes in here, but the notes that, that are revealed, uh, it's the pink pepper note in the opening, which gives you that sort of happy thoughts, you know, that pink pepper. Uh, note and it's got that gorgeous suede note and some woodiness in the base from cedar and other woody notes It's very musky too and I can swear to you there are other like aromatic notes in here That I can't put my finger on but you know It is a gorgeous sexy leather you guys this I would I like to go out wearing go you know date night night out leather pants and a red hot red top okay that's the kind of outfit that comes to mind every time i wear this which is what i tend to pair this with gorgeous fragrance gorgeous leather the best leather fragrance i've ever smelled it's the smoothest leather note i've ever smelled for example like the cherry oud the leather is not as smooth as the leather in the luby raj i'm telling you that luby world collection is top notch you guys Mwah. Anyway, so those are my favorite, top favorite designer fragrances for winter weather. I try to find joy in fragrances and other things when sun goes down at 4.30 in the evening, you guys, in the afternoon. I mean, oh my lord, I can't wait for that to, you know, kind of build up and start the days get like longer. 
you know, after winter solstice, but anyway. Yeah, so I love my my winter fragrances. I love, enjoy wear my, wearing my um, super strong, you know, lasting, projecting fragrances, which is one of the best things about cold weather. Let me know down in the comment section your favorite winter fragrances, especially designer ones. I mean, let me know period your winter fragrances, right? I'm going to start bringing you guys more specialty videos like the, the latest video that I uploaded, like the Guerla, the Extrait collection that I did a review on, you know what I mean? And I, and I did another video comparing the old Gourmand Coquette to, um, to the new Fève Gourmand, you know what I mean? So that type of videos that are a little bit more hard to find, if you will. Let me know and I need one more favor from you guys. I'm trying to, I know that I went back and forth with this and I tried to do this twice before, but I'm trying to do kind of a little bit more surveying from you guys, find out why you watch my channel. Do you watch it? You know, you guys know that I do all kinds of beauty con co uh, content, not just fragrance, but makeup, skincare, body care, everything, right? And I do a little bit of fashion too. So let me know down in the comment section the main reason you watch my channel. Do you watch it for the fragrances? Do you watch it for the makeup? Do you watch it for both? Do you watch it for fashion? Let me know down in the comment section. Let me know if I should start a separate channel for the, the makeup and the other beauty content and you want this to be exclusively a fragrance channel or not. You know, I, I'm doing another survey. You guys can also reply to me on my community page. I'm going to put a poll there for you to answer as well, but I thought I'd ask in this video. So do me a favor and let me know down in the comment section why, which content you you watch the channel mostly for. I watch it because you're fabulous. That's my husband, by the way. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Ring that notification bell so you can be notified. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I will see you guys in my next video.